Pastor Pam, will you grab my phone, please? Hallelujah. Go with me this morning to Psalms, the 86th chapter, and the 11th verse. Go to uh, King James Version of the Bible. Well, no, the Passion Translation. I want to talk to you about the set time of God. I want to talk to you about God shifting and moving. Hallelujah. <clears throat> says, teach me about you. How you work, how you move, so that I can walk onward in your truth until everything that's within me brings honor to your name. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for shifting. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would rain down your blessing upon us, that you would be glorified in our lives. For, God, we know that this is you. And we thank you, God, for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, oh man, oh man, it's heart fam. It is wonderful to see each and every one of you know that we love you. We're excited about what God is doing and how God is moving. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. <clears throat> you see, when we begin to look at our mantra for the year, we talk about that it is up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. But there's a revelation if you will, that the Lord wants to unpack. As the Lord begins to unpack this, we need to begin to look at this psalm, not just as something to read, but something to pray, because, because this is a prayer. And it needs to be a prayer, a prayer for our life. And as, as we're in this time of fasting and praying, God is moving on our behalf. God is shifting, amen? And truly, we need God to teach us some things. Truly, we need God to reveal some things. But as we begin to look at the other aspects of this psalm, you know, we begin to see that this is a prayer of faith. And if we back it up and go to verse 1, we begin to see that this is a psalm of the sons of Korah. Sons of Korah, they were... They were, they, were, they, they were skillful in worship and skillful in warfare. So this is a prayer of faith by King David. It says, Lord, bend down to listen to my prayer. I am in deep trouble. See, because you know what? Sometimes we're in deep trouble. Sometimes we look good. On the outside, but on the inside, our emotions or our, our feelings or maybe there are some external things that get us to the place that we are in deep trouble. He said, I'm in deep trouble. He said, bend down. And I need you to know God loves you enough that he will bend down. God loves you enough that God wants to intervene and step into your situation. He said, bend down. Listen to my prayer. I'm in deep trouble. I'm broken and humbled and desperately need your help. You know what? Man, there are moments that I'm desperate in need of God's help. And sometimes the help that I need is the help that I need from the me, the inner me's. Amen? Sometimes it's just that I'm dealing with stuff that is, that is larger than me, but I need God to intervene, and I need you to know that God is faithful enough to step into whatever your situation is, that God can begin to minister to wherever you are. But you've got to have the faith to trust, to believe that he is. 
and that God will. And that he will meet you in times of trouble. It says, guard my life. For I'm your faithful friend, your loyal servant. Man, David. The, David, he said, he, said he, he was the man after God's own heart. But he said, I'm your faithful friend, your loyal servant. It's something to say that I'm a friend of God or I'm a faithful friend. How many of you got friends? Let me see your hands. See, because all of us got friends, but not all the people that we call friends or want to call us our friend are faithful. Right? I don't know if you would categorize yourself as a faithful friend to them. But when it comes to God, we have to look in the mirror and determine, could, could I even say I'm your faithful friend and I am your servant? If you're my friend, then you care about the things I care about. If you're my servant, then you serve because I want you to serve so that we can reach others, so that we can touch the lives of a multitude. He said, I'm your servant for life. Oh, man, that, that last phrase right there is real. Because some of us, you know, sometimes people, they, they, they can't say I'm your servant for life. But you know, God wants us to be the servant for life. He says, I turn to you in faith, oh my God. My hero, come and rescue me. Lord God, hear my constant cry for help. Show me your favor and bring me to your fountain, oh gracious, oh grace. Restore joy to your loving servant once again, for I am for." All I am is yours, oh God. He said, for all I am is yours. See, 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 David, I don't know what David was going through here. But I do know that David was expressing distress. I do know that there were times when, when, when David was in deep distress, amen? David was in deep distress when he made a mistake with Bathsheba. Well, I shouldn't say a mistake because he, he willfully did it. But he was in distress when it came time to address the issue. He was in distress when, when the baby was dying. Or maybe this was when he was on the run from King Saul. Maybe this was one of those times that he was out in, in the middle of nowhere and he needed God to help him. Maybe this was one of those times when his brothers were, were, were giving him a hard time. I don't know, but guess what? David had come to a place that he knew that he could do what? Trust God. I need you to get to the place that you can take whatever it is and give it back to God. You know what we do too many times? We look at a four-letter word. And we look at that four-letter word and we let it dictate us. Because we look in the mirror. And sometimes we look through the window and all we want to focus in on, you know, sometimes I tell my boys, you know, sometimes they watch a movie and, 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 and if something uh, happens in the movie that's, that's negative or, you know, distasteful, maybe somebody passes gas and they, 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 they talk about that for the next, next five minutes. I said, why do you focus in on the negative? Right? In other words, so many times we pay too much attention to the flaw, the F-L-A-W. And we get caught up in looking at our own flaws. We get caught up in being uh, so captivated by looking at someone else's flaws. But God wants us to move and make our minds up that we're going to move from, the, from, from being flaw-focused flaw to being F-L-O-W, flow of purpose, focused. We need to become focused on God. Because guess what? Let me tell you something. If, if we had to be flawless, God could use nobody. God couldn't use any of us. But guess what? If we have a flaw, bring it to the altar. Bring it to God. 
See, the devil, you know what he does? He takes that flaw and he, <clears throat> he beats you up with it. He wants to keep you in a place of conviction. He wants to keep you in a place of unworthiness. Guess what? I'm made worthy by the blood of the Lamb, not by who I am, but by the blood of the Lamb. It's God's blood applied to my life that says I can go ahead. It says that when I get knocked down or I just fall down, I can get up again. See, some of you got to get up. And maybe you just need to get up in your mind. You got to get up in your mind and you got to begin to call upon God. David was calling upon God. In Psalms 85 verse 6, he said, revive us again. I need you to know God wants to revive you. God wants to bring life. God is saying when he's talking about reviving, he's talking about getting you back into the flow. Back into fulfilling his purpose and his plan. He said, revive us again, oh God. He said, I know you will. Give us a fresh start. You know what? That's my cry. Give us a fresh start. Give us a fresh start. Have you ever messed up where you just needed a fresh start? Or maybe you didn't mess up. Maybe you just weren't doing your best and you just needed what? A fresh start. You know, there have been times in my life that I had to cry out to God and I said, God, will you give me a fresh start? God, will you, will you be merciful to me? Will you show me your love? Then all your people will taste your joy and gladness. I need you to understand that God wants you to taste the joy and gladness. Gladness and joy is an inside job. Gladness is something that just bubbles over, if you will. It bubbles over onto everybody around you. It bubbles over, if you will. You see, you need to understand that the sons of Korah, they were the first ones that started what we would call the, the, the worship ministry, if you will. The music ministry. They were worshipers. They were elite worshipers, and yet they were elite worshipers warriors. I need you to understand that we need to get to the place that we are elite worshipers and warriors of God. God is calling you to rise up. God is calling you to say enough is enough. I'm not going to keep taking this from the devil, but it's time for us to rise up and fight. Yet I'm going to worship. You see the sons of Korah? They were right there with David. The kingdom had been taken away from Saul because Saul decided that he wouldn't trust God. Because Saul decided that he was going to be a people pleaser. How many of you have been people pleasers? And I'm telling you, you know what? It is miserable when you run around and you're just trying to please people. Sometimes when you're trying to please people, they're never satisfied. The moment you do one thing that they want, then they ask for another. I, 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 I know a kid that, that sometimes will, will, you know, you'll say, you know, you'll, they'll ask something, you'll say, no, 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 no. But the minute you say yes to this, they, what they do is they wear you down until they can find a yes. And when they find the yes, and you say yes, immediately, even before the words are not even out of your mouth good, they ask for something else. See, when you're a people pleaser, guess what? You find yourself frustrated. You find yourself off balance a lot of times. You find yourself lacking and wanting because you're not being focused where you need to be focused. God's going to give you fulfillment when you, when you worship him, when you allow him, when you worship him, when you, when you can not only worship him, but you'll war for him. So here we are, we find that, 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 that David was there at Hebron. And as David was there at Hebron, if you will, after Saul had been disqualified, that the sons of Korah were there. And the sons of Korah were there and they were worshiping God. And they were magnifying the king and, and, and they were appointing and, 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 and ratifying, if you will, or shall I say the coronation. Because here in just a few months, we're going to see a coronation, if you will for King Charles III, but this was King David. He was being coronated, coronated. 
if you will. But hear this, because this is what God wants for us. Huh? God wants us to shift. And when we look at Psalms 133, verse 1, it says, behold. See, because you know what? You need to shift your heart. Man, sometimes I look at the news and I think, is there anything good? Is there anything, can they talk about anything good? And if you look at any of the uh, uh, news apps, they keep all the bad stuff on there forever. And it's like, you, you, know, you don't have any good news, no better news. Or you just leave it out there until you have something worse to report on. Something more, uh, you know, uh, uh, tittling, tittling to somebody. Right? Y'all need to hear me. Because God is doing something in us. He said, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. You know what? I've been around long enough to know that the enemy does everything he can to cause there to be disunity. Disunity in your family, disunity on your job. Man, you know, I don't know if it was the OJs, but years ago there was a song, and I mean, I remember, I remember hearing this song. My dad picked me up, and he was taking me to the music, I mean, to the movies, and, 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 and when he picked me up, the music was blaring. And all I could hear was, you know, he was talking about them backstabbers. You know, he talked about everybody want to take your place, them backstabbers. And, and I, as a little kid, I probably was in kindergarten or whatnot. And I asked him, I said, what's a backstabber? Well, he did his best to try to explain to me in a way that I could receive it, but you know, that's what the enemy does. He creates that disunity. And oftentimes they, they, he uses backstabbers. People either trying to take your place or people trying to uh, just get you out of place. You know what I'm saying? And, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> the Lord says, how beautiful, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2. It's like a precious ointment upon the head. See, when we can operate in unity, it's like, it's like we're submitted under Jesus. Amen. And, 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 then, and then the pastor, if you will, and the anointing or the ointment is applied to the pastor that ran down to the beard. Even to Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts and the garment, if you will. So, so then it, it, it comes down on the pastor and then it comes down to the leadership and then it comes down to the body. Guess what? God wants us to be in unity. The enemy wants to do everything he can to separate us, to get us off by ourselves. And you know what? My mind is made up. I made up my mind a long time ago that I was going to go with Jesus all the way. That I was going to continue to chase after him and to pursue after him. But God wants us to get a hold of this thing. He said, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion for the Lord, he commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Guess what? God wants to command a blessing to you today. Many of you have had God command a blessing to you, but you have given up waiting for the manifestation of the commanded blessing. I'm telling you, don't give up. I'm telling you, don't give in. I'm telling you, don't give out. Continue to trust the Lord. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. It's like a precious ointment that's poured on our heads, right? Psalm 102, it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. He's talking about us, church, for the time. Somebody say time. For the time. See, guess what? 
Many of us in 2022 went through a lot of stress, struggle, and strain. And many of us are fighting in 2023 right now, but I'm here to tell you that there's a time coming. It says, thou shalt have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Now, you know, favor is synonymous with grace. And grace is unmerited. Grace is not something you earn, but it is something that is given. And let me tell you something. God is about to bestow grace and favor on your life. God is about to move on your life. But what you must do is stay connected, stay up underneath the fountain, and keep your ear to his lips. Continue to listen to the voice of God. I was praying last night. Every Saturday night, there are a group of us pastors that we gather together and we pray. And oftentimes we, we share various challenges or what have you, but I was talking to a pastor who during the midst of the pandemic had, had gone through some challenges and had some people that, you know, he thought were gonna be on the bus forever and they weren't. And, and, and God gave me a word to share about that. And sometimes when God gives you a word, you know, sometimes you think it's so far out there or so far from the realm of possibility, I don't know if I wanna say this. But I began to talk to him and I began to say that this individual was going to be a part of something they had coming up and that they were going to do something. And, 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 and I remember that as God was, I was in the flow. I wasn't in the flaw. I was in the flow and I was listening to what God was saying. And as I was listening to what God was saying, I remember I paused and I thought, am I going to call this guy's name? You know, it's easy to just say some people. Right? But when, you get, when you're getting specific, you're putting yourself out there. Right? But you know, the truth be told, sometimes God is specific and sometimes he isn't. But God was being very specific. And it was up to me to stay in the flow and not think about the possible flaws. Amen? And so I gave him the guy's name. And, 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 and when I did that, it was, like, it was like the flow began to overflow. I began to walk around and I was, I was flowing in the Holy Ghost and I was sharing what God was saying. And then at the end of it all, he said, I want to share something with you to let you know how good God is. And he said, he said last week, he said he was, he was preaching and he opened up his, 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 his preaching material and, and oftentimes he opens up his, his Facebook while he's on so he can like it or whatnot. And he just so happened to notice that that individual was on and commenting. He said, I want you to know that God is verifying, already verifying the word that came out of your mouth. You know, and this was, you know, it was what it was but I want you to know that there's a set time. Somebody say set time. See, because it says to favor, to, uh, a time to favor, yea, the set time to come. You need to understand that God has got a set time. And, and time in the New Testament is measured by two things. One is chronos, which is a chronological time. Time, seconds, minutes, weeks, hours, months, years, if you will, seasons. And then there's the kairos. And the Kairos is the God-appointed time. And I need you to understand that though we are going through the Kronos, if you will, the, the, the chronological time, that there is a Kairos time that God has. And this God-appointed time is when God intervenes. I don't know about you, but I need God to intervene. But guess what? I've come to the place that now I can just say, God, I trust you and I thank you in advance because I know that the Kairos moment is coming. I know that, God, you are about to intervene and to intercept whatever I'm going through. That God appointed time, the time that God intervenes in my life, your life, for the for, for people's gain and God's glory, for the work of God. See, this Kairos time is unplanned. It's an unplanned, unexpected, unscheduled moment.
When God decides, when God blesses or favors according to his sovereign will. You know, yesterday Kylie had a basketball game. And really, I just wanted to get home after the game. It kind of been, you know, a full week, and I just wanted to get home. But everybody was hungry, and I figured, okay, we need to get something to eat. And the boys, for whatever reason, they, 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 their favorite restaurant is Chili's. And I was like, not feeling Chili's. You know, I look, is, is there anything else? But I felt like, okay, God, I felt like God said, just go. And so in my mind, I said, okay, I'll go out by the house. But we were real close to another one. And, and the Lord said, go to this one. Now, you know, the food hadn't always been what it needed to be. But I go in. And we, we, we come in, and, and it, it's not real busy. And immediately they, 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 they wanted to usher us over by the bar. We said, hey, can we not sit by the bar? And almost like, I felt like, almost like a punishment, they wanted to sit us right by the door. And I thought, I don't want to sit here. But I was, I, was, I was half willing to just say, okay. But then all of a sudden, you know, we decided, okay, we're just going to ask them to move us. But meanwhile, while I'm trying to get the wait waitress's attention, I see a guy in the back talking about. And I'm looking like, I don't know you. Pastor Pam walks around, and he walks over to her, says, did y'all want to move? He says, sit anywhere you want. I'm talking about unplanned, unexpected. Sit anywhere you want. And so we got up and we moved and we sat down. He says, hey, old school. Old school to old school. And I'm like, okay, how you doing? Yeah, and we sit down and the boys introduce themselves. And he says, sit where you are. And then he begins to take our order. Now, you know what? This was the manager. He said, I'm the manager. You can sit wherever you want. I said, okay. He said, look, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to give this to you. He says, look, I'm gonna, I'm, you can order this, but I'm going to take it off your bill. He said, you can do this, but don't, don't worry. And he says, I got some certificates that I'm going to give you after the fact that you can use just any other time. Just because. And we order our food, and lo and behold, the food was fabulous. I was like, man, I don't remember ever eating it, and it tastes this good. But we sit there and we eat, and they keep coming, and I have better service than I could ever imagine ever having at a Chili's. We get ready to go, and I'm, 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 I'm walking out, and he walks up to me, bubbling with determination. And he says, what's your name? And I kept telling Pastor Pam, I says, I felt like I knew him. I felt like but, but I couldn't place him, and I did, still don't place him. And I told him, I started to, to tell him who I was, and Zakai says, Pastor Ronald Wayne Frierson. And I said, okay. So he says, hey, well, you know what? He says, I want to be a blessing to your ministry. He says, can I do something in partnership to help reach more people? And he said, we'll bring whatever needs to be done on that time. I want you to understand I didn't plan to be there. I want you to understand that when it came time for the bill, it wasn't the real bill. I want you to understand that it was a God intervention, that God opened the door that for us to do what we do. Amen? Why? Because I was willing not to to, to, to stay in a place of flaw just doing what I wanted to do. But I wanted to get into the flow and I heard. See, sometimes we just think we need to hear God on the big stuff. Going to a restaurant is a small thing. But guess what? You, your ears have to be open to hear what God is saying. And he blessed. He opened a door of blessing that was fabulous. Incredible. Favor. It was God's favor 
And favor is uncommon. God's giving us a breakthrough. Blessing that God has orchestrated for your life. It's coming, church. It's coming. God is bringing blessings that are orchestrated for your life. But you must stay in the flow. You must stay in, in the direction that God is setting for you. The set time for God's favor, position for success, transcends the barriers that this world puts before us. Whether they be racial, whether they be social economic, whether they be generational. Are y'all getting anything today? God's favor transcends and causes us to rise above. God wants us to, to rise above. See, I need you to understand because God is giving you a set time. You just have to continue to, to, to just not give up. I'm telling you, don't give up. I'm telling you, don't be so disillusioned by the things that are happening around you, but stay in faith, trusting and believing what God is saying. God is going to bring you through. There's a time, a set time for God to bring you through. In the book of Samuel 2.26, and the child grew and was in the favor of both with the Lord and also with men. Talking about Samuel. Huh? I need you to understand that you're going to see that there are moments that you're going to see God's favor on you. And he's going to cause others to favor you. I need you to understand this. Esther, huh? Esther found favor with God. But, but Esther was put into a, a situation where in a moment of crisis, she was put into a position that transformed the whole nation. Esther had lost her mother and father. Esther had found herself, if you will, uh, uh, in exile or, or found herself being in captivity of another country. Y'all need to hear me. Because God is trying to work on us today. Amen. God is trying to get us to the place that we will magnify him. Amen. See, this is the deal. Even before Esther, we saw that in Luke 2, 52, it says Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and the favor of God and man. God is going to move on your let me have. You're going to see in 2023, God is going to give you favor with him and cause man to give you favor. You just got to stay close to him. So Esther... You know, see, see, and what happened? See, Esther wasn't supposed to be there. Why? Because King Bashti, she, she dissed the king. She didn't want to stay connected. She didn't want to stay in the flow, but she got into the flaw. And so, and so she had to be cast aside. But in Esther 2.15, it says, now when, when the turn of Esther, somebody say turn. I need you to understand that you got a turn and your turn is coming. The daughters of Abaniah, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon us, upon her. See, sometimes we feel like we need to do things. We need, we need to help ourselves. We need a little extra, extra, right? But all you got to do, see, God, God gives you some things or has others give you some things. And, 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 and rather than looking and saying, this isn't enough, enough, because all the other women that were coming before the king, they were bringing everything they could to make themselves look good. She required nothing. Sometimes when you walk in the simplicity, sometimes when you walk in just who you are, the beauty of God shines forward. You just got to trust God. Huh? You just got to trust God. You see, because in a single moment, it changed her life forever. A single moment. 
A moment she didn't put on airs. A moment that she was just being real and simplistic. She trusted God enough. And in that moment, it changed her life forever. In 2022, you may have gone through hell and high water. You may have had some high moments, but so God is going to God is going to warranty some things with the authority of His Word in 2023. If it's going to be, it's going to be up to you to stay where God wants you to be. You see, in Psalms 102, <coughs> verse three, it says. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time, yea, the set time to favor her is come. The set time, the set time, God is about to favor you. God's going to deal with your job. God's going to deal with certain situations. But when your boss acts up, when your coworker acts up, don't engage out of your flesh, but stay connected and do what God said for you to do. The enemy's trying to get you to just get out of get out of where God wants you to be. Huh? If it's going to be, it's up to me. Look at Caleb. Caleb believed it was his turn. Huh? In the expanded Bible, it reads this. This is now when he when he behold, he looked as he kept the promise. Caleb was old. He was an old man. And guess what? When it came time, he said, God, it's my turn. He said, God, I've been faithful. God, I've been with those hard heads who murmured and, claimed, and complained for 40 years. He said, God, I've been faithful. I was faithful in Egypt. I've been faithful in the wilderness. He said, now, God, I'm in the promised land. He said, give me my mountain. There's some things that God has promised you, and you just have to make up your mind. Stop stop looking at the negative. Stop looking at the things that said you can't, and believe what God said is about to come to pass. You just got to stay connected. Stay connected to him. See, he was out there for 45 years. Yeah, God. He said, I'm still here. He said, I will rise above. I will stand. I will do what it takes to get what is my inheritance. There was an inheritance given for you. The inheritance that was given to him, he just, just simply said, give me my promise. Can you tell the Lord, give me my promise? See, I need you to understand that sometimes we look, we, we begin to look at the clock and we lose track. There was a man who was laid at the pool of Bethesda. And the man that was laid at the pool of Bethesda, if you will, oftentimes, if you will, they were there that were sick and maimed, and they, they needed God to move. They needed God to shift, if you will. And, 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 and so Jesus came over there by the pool of Bethesda, and, and he walked over to the man and he said, do you want to be made Oh, immediately the man, rather than saying, yes, don't get caught up in wanting to express your feelings or your dissatisfaction. See, sometimes, sometimes God brings a blessing to us and we're too busy talking about what we're dissatisfied. We're too busy talking about what we don't like and how things aren't going the way we want. Jesus simply said, do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? Guess what? Jesus didn't even acknowledge the man's comments. But the man said, at a certain time of the year, there's a troubling of the water. And I don't have anybody to put me in the water. Stop saying what you don't have and start looking at what God has put before you. He was there for 38 years. He was crippled. So many people are crippled in their mind. They may not be crippled in their body or they're crippled in their spirit. And God is saying, do you want to be healed? Sometimes you see dreams seemingly fall, fading away. And God is saying, do you want to be healed? You see, for Esther, it was one moment that changed the rest of her life. It was one moment that changed, saved all of the Jews of the nation. For this man, it was one moment. And guess what? When he began to hear what the Lord was saying, the Lord just simply said, do you want to be made whole? The man never said yes. You know that? You know what the man did? He listened to what Jesus said. 
He said, pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and do the impossible. Pick up the bed and do what nobody else thinks you can do. Pick up the bed and deny your what used to be your destiny and walk in, if you will, my promise. Y'all hear me today? So many people are blind in their mind. They're blind spiritually. And they're missing what God has for them. There was a woman named Helen Keller. Y'all remember Helen Keller? She was a philanthropist. She served four presidents. But she had a quote that said, the greatest tragedy in life is to have sight and can't see. Now, if you don't know anything about Helen Keller, how many of you ever seen the Helen Keller story? Huh? It's an old movie. It ain't going to be a feel-good movie till the end. Okay? But she was blind as a child. And she was an unruly child. But she learned how to read. Said she's an advisor to four different presidents. Hello? Yet she was blind, but she said, I can see. Yet how many people can see, but can't? They have sight, but they can't see. See, we got to get to that place that we're going to acknowledge God and what God is saying. That man came to the place that rather than looking at his old situation, he began to see what God said. Somebody say, Lord, bend down and listen to my prayer. I'm in deep trouble. Maybe it's something you feel like you can handle, but you know I've come to the place that even if it's something I can handle, all the more I want to say, Lord, let me hear your voice. Give me instruction. Why? Because a lot of times when I can handle it, what happens is, is this, is that I find myself making unnecessary mistakes because I was too confident in my own ability or I, I didn't pay attention to the detail. Or maybe I just missed it. Psalm 82, 86 verse 2 says, Guard my life, for I am your faithful friend, your servant for life. I turn to you in faith. Hmm? We got to go back to that prayer where we say, God, teach me. Teach me to know more about you. Teach me to know your name. Teach me to walk uprightly. Teach me that everything within me brings honor to you, huh? See, see, if, 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 if everything within you brings honor, if he's saying that, that means there may be some things that have brought dishonor. And we need to begin to function and flow. The Lord wants us to love our neighbor as ourselves, but some people can't love their neighbor because they don't love themselves. Or maybe they didn't know how to love, and so they, they, they love this person who is disrespecting them. And God is saying it's time to cut the flow. Stop dealing with that person that is dissing you or dishonoring you. And let God be glorified in your life. See, because they're holding you back. And God wants you to move on. Some people, the Bible says that God gives you men for your life, people for your life. But some people come in your life. And they come into your life and they're a burden. And if they're a burden, God says, cut the cord. If they're an assignment from God, that's different. But then God gives you people in your life who speak life into you, who will build you up, who will encourage you. See, if we're going to honor God, then we come down to this for us to do what? Pick up our cross and follow him. How often? Daily. Why? Offenses are going to come. We can't run around being offended because when we allow offenses to take hold, then the root of bitterness takes hold. But we need to cast down every imagination, huh? D deny the things that have held us back. Let God be glorified in our life. Let God have his way. Lord, teach us about who you are. God teaches about your goodness, teaches about your faith, God. 
right now in the name of Jesus. Teach me, God. Teach me, God. Teach me. Huh? Teach me about your power. Teach me about the El Shaddai. Amen? The God that transitions, the almighty God. Teach me, God, about who you are. Jehovah Jireh, God, you are my provider. No matter what it is that I need, you are my provider. God, have your way. Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, you are my banner, God. You fight for me. You give me a rallying point. You give me a place to go, and, and you encourage me. Jehovah sent canoe, huh? Huh? Why? Because we all need a Savior. And he provided a lamb for us when we couldn't be saved. I want you to know, Heart family, that this year has a, is a set time. And you just have to choose to listen to what the Lord is saying. Because guess what? When he said, do you want to be well? The man had to, had to transition his thinking. When, when, when the friends came and Jesus was in the house and, and, and they brought him over on a, uh, 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 a little stretcher, he couldn't get in. But guess what? They knew that if he didn't get in, there was no healing for him. Why? Because the healing was in the house. He had to get in the house to get the healing. I'm sure they said, hey, man, could you let us in? Hey, could you, could you make a way? Nobody was moving because everybody was there to get whatever they needed. You know what they did? They tore the roof off the sucker. They lifted him up on top of the roof. They tore the roof off. And they dropped him down right in the midst of the, of the crowd in front of Jesus. They said, we will not be denied. This is the set time. This is the favor time of God. Make up your mind that you will not turn around. Make up your mind that you will not go back. Make up your mind that even though there are obstacles, God will transcend you. God will lift you up and God will show you how to continue to move forward. But you got to keep listening to his voice. You got to let him have his way. And let God be glorified in your life. And so I challenge you today to look at whatever challenges that have been holding you back or whatever greatness God has before you and you just simply say, it's up to me. It's up to me to believe. It's up to me to stay connected. It's up to me to continue to trust God. It's up to me to love the way God wants me to love. It's up to me to cut the, 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 the things that are dragging me down so that I can move the way God wants me to move. And if you're ready to say, God, I'm ready to move closer to you. I want you to just stand where you are. If you're ready to walk into the set time, that, that, that Kairos time, that, and, and, and you're tired of just living in the Kronos time, just stand where you are. And let God be glorified in your life. Will you let the Lord have his way in your life? The Bible talks about us setting aside the weight and the sin. We all want to focus in on the, the sin and get rid of the sin. But he said, set aside the weight. Is there weight in your life? Maybe you're married. And maybe there's a weight that's keeping you from getting close to your wife or close to your husband. Maybe there's some weight that's keeping you from not really connecting with your kids. But I just want you to surrender all. You online, I want you to surrender all. If you're ready to move into this, to the, the, this new season, I'm telling you, you're going to see that there are not just one, but multiple set times. But some of you, you're going to have such a dynamic set time in your life. Something that's going to come and it's going to change the rest of your life. Are you ready? 
Are you ready? See, and when it comes, it's not going to just change for you, but for those around you. But let's set aside the weight and the sin and prepare to move forward in the Lord. Lift your hands to heaven and just tell God, I surrender in Jesus' name. God, bring us to that place, that set time. God, bring us to that place that we would magnify you. God, bring us to the place. For God, we choose to trust you. It's up to me to trust you. It's up to me to hear your, 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 your logos, logicos, and your rhema word. It's up to me to stay in prayer, trusting and believing. It's up to me to remove the things that have stopped me from hearing your word. Lord, you'll be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. As Pastor Pam comes and closes his up. God is so good to us in spite of ourselves, amen? And so we just want you to remember in this time of prayer and fasting, the word of God says that you can have what you say. So ask God for what you want. And don't waver, don't change your mind, don't back up. Ask him for what you want and go after it. Because that's what God is requiring of us to say, if it's going to be, it's up to me in 2023. So nobody's going to do it for us or you. Everybody's got to dig in for themselves, amen? 6 a.m. prayer. You remember 6 a.m. prayer? If you can get up that early, it's just a few minutes. But most of all, be faithful to God in what you do. Because even though you don't see some things happen, God is working behind the scenes, amen? So don't try to figure out what only God can work out. The God talking to the company and all that he's doing in his house. I can just take this for me personally. God has so changed my prayer life. It's amazing to me. And you miss, and you forget the, the time and the, the precious power of God when you get in prayer, like we've been had time to pray in this fast. And you think, Lord, what was I doing? How did I ever miss this? Don't let the world get you so busy that you miss God. But let's stay connected and faithful to what he has called us to. Because the promises are amazing. Even in the little things. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, as we are here on one accord, we ask that you would never allow us to leave your presence. But keep us under the canopy of protection. Dismiss us from this place and put a hand of protection around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. 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 You all right, family? Yes, sir. Good. It's good to see you. Amen. Uh, so we don't, we don't give God the glory. Amen. 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 Bless you, man of God. Good to see you.